Okay, welcome. We are going to talk about um, the FRQs from Unit 2 Progress Check. Um, so if you haven't already, pause the video and open up AP Classroom so that you can type answers and look at the questions more in depth um, and be able to translate your stuff into the document. If you're doing this on paper, that is also totally fine because then you'll be able to do the graph. Um, but we'll go through the um, kind of gist of what it's asking and things like that. Okay, at this point you should have AP Classroom open and you should go to the Unit 2 Progress Checks uh, for the FRQs. And this is question number one. Um, if you would, pause the video and read through both the stem of the question and the A, B, C, D that's being asked of you. So take a moment, pause the video and do that. All right, so uh, now that you've read the question, um, it's talking about this substance that they're calling L. So it's an unknown substance, um, and it wants uh, to, the scientists want to determine how it enters mammalian cells in a culture. So let's underline some important information just in the question stem. So the first thing is, the cells maintain a 120 millimolar intracellular concentration. So Let's extend that out there. So that means inside the cell, um, it's got a concentration of 120 millimolars. Then they determine the rate of entry of substance L into the cell at various external concentrations. So uh, the concentrations go from 10 to 100, and then they measure the rate of entry of substance L into the cell as a percent of the maximum. So part A, over here it says, identify the most likely mode of transport across the membrane for substance L. Explain how information provided helps determine the most likely mode of transport. So you're really in this question, you're doing two things. You are identifying kind of the, uh, the mode of transport. So it's like active or passive, osmosis, diffusion, things like that. And then you're explaining kind of how you know using the data that's provided. Okay, so I'm going to go to my answer sheet right here. And I'm just going to title it FRQ number one. And then in preparation, I'm going to do that to signal that I'm going to talk about part A. So to determine the type of transport, we would look at both the internal concentration, so that 120 millimolars, compared to all of these right here. So these concentrations go from 10 to 100 outside of the cells, external. So that means that inside the cell is going to be um, a higher concentration and then lower will be outside of the cell. So I'm just gonna draw a little picture here. This is not required, but I told you guys I like to, to have pictures. So inside it's 120, okay? And then outside is anywhere from 10 to 100, but that's lower, right? So we have a higher concentration on the inside and a lower on the outside. But substance L is going to be flowing into the cell and so the substance L is moving into the cell. We're going from a low to high concentration. So the mode of transport here is going to be active transport. So we'll come down here. The mode of transport is active transport. Now we're not quite done with part A. It does ask us to explain how we know using the data. Well, the internal concentration of the cell is 120 millimolar. You can just put the abbreviation, which is higher than the test 
concentrations outside of the cell. Awesome. Pause the video if you need more time to copy. Now part B says on the axes provided, construct an appropriately labeled line graph with correct scale and units to illustrate the data in table one. Okay, so uh, for this part, it's gonna be better if you have your question pulled up on your screen so that you can see the data for the whole time. Okay, now I'm gonna go down oh, to my graph. Oh my gosh, right here. And this is actually the size of the graph that they gave on AP Classroom. Your paper may have something different, but we're gonna use the one that's on uh, AP Classroom. So the first thing is we need to decide what goes where. So in this case, what you're gonna do is you're going to put external concentration, and I'm gonna actually come down a little bit onto my answer sheet just for room. Um, so external concentration of L and the unit, can't forget it, is millimolar. And over here on the side, this is gonna be rate of entry of L and this is going to be a percent. And now we need to figure out, we're gonna do, uh, it does tell us to do a line graph, but we have to do our scale. So you wanna take up the entire graph and luckily for us, so let's start on the Y axis. The rate of entry goes all the way from five to 100. Um, and since we have 10 tick marks, I think it's best if we do, so this will be, you know, zero percent, five, uh, sorry, 10, 20, 30, all the way up. Okay, and then the same thing about the um, x-axis. That one goes uh, from 10 to 100, so we'll do the same thing. And then you plot your points. So I'm gonna plot the points off camera really quick and then um, I will show you. So if you will, go ahead and plot your points and then we'll go from there. Okay, and now we're back and here is the line. So here's your graph. The things you have to make sure you include are labels for your axes. You also need the appropriate line and you need to take up the entire space of the graph. So even if the graph is huge, space out your stuff, your scale of the graph to take up the entire thing. So your graph should look something like this. And now we can go back and answer the rest of the question. So that's part B. If you want on your answer sheet for when you're taking the actual AP exam, you can put C graph if you want, if you're one of those that wants to stay in order. And then C is our next part. So let's go back up here and look and see what it says. It says, determine the external concentration of substance L that will result in one half of the maximal entry rate. Okay, so let's look. Uh, you can look here and make inferences from the table, or you can look at our nice graph that we just did, and we can estimate. So it wants to know about what is about 50%. What's the concentration there to get about 50%? Okay, so I'm gonna change my color so you can see where I'm marking, but 50% is right here. And so if we follow that over, it's right around here. So it's not 30 and it's not quite 35. So you can give a range and you can say that the concentration, um, the external concentration for 50% would be about th somewhere between 31 and 34. So let's go back here. The concentration of L between 
between 31 and 34 millimolars will provide one half of the maximal entry rate. Okay, now let's look at D. D says, predict the likely effect on the ability of substance L to enter the cells if substance L is attached to a large protein instead of free in the culture. Okay, so here we are with part D. So it's asking about what, uh, what would happen if it was attached to a large protein. So if substance L was attached to a large protein, it would not be able to enter the cell unless there is a cell membrane receptor for the protein. So proteins are really large molecules. And so if it was attached to a protein, if this substance L, even if it could diffuse before, um, if it's attached to a large protein, it's not gonna be able to just go through the cell membrane, it's too big. Um, but the, the side of that is if there's a membrane receptor for that protein that it's attached to, that may be able to help it move across the, the membrane. But uh, in general, if there's no membrane receptor for the protein, it's not gonna be able to travel through. Okay, and that is A through D for FRQ number one. Now, let's look at FRQ number two. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to read FRQ number two and I want you to make some notes as you go. All right, so this one is one of the shorter ones. It still has parts A through D, but you're not having to make a graph, so that's pretty cool. So what we see here is a model of the plasma membrane. That's what the picture is showing. And um, it really doesn't give you any background information above that, right? Just instructions. So part A says, describe the biological need for cells to be surrounded by a membrane that is selectively permeable for different materials. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do, you know, this time I'll write in blue, FRQ number two, and then we have part A. And for part A, it's asking about uh, what, basically why do we need membranes that are selectively permeable? Remember the function of the cell membrane is to kind of regulate what goes in and out. And so in order to do that, the cell membrane um, is selectively permeable. So how we'll say it is the cell membrane separates the internal and external cell environments. And is selectively permeable to regulate movement of molecules in or out of the cell. I'll just say in slash out of the cell. So that's why we need a membrane and that's why it's selectively permeable is to help that cell regulate what's going in and what's going out. All right, so for part B, 
part B is asking, let's look, explain how the model shows selective permeability of the membrane to specific ions. So in the picture, it's got a couple of different things. So we have uh, a lipid, small lipid soluble molecule here. We have water soluble ions there. There's a membrane channel here, and it's showing things moving through one way or another, right? So selective permeable, selective permeability, um, it, what you can tell from the picture is, is that the membrane is going to allow these dark uh, lipid soluble molecules to move through because they're lipid soluble, which means they're probably gonna be hydrophobic. So they can kind of go through and they're small. Now the other, the water soluble ions, they are not passing over here directly through the membrane. No, they're going through this channel protein right here, which means they need a little bit of help to get through the membrane, which means the membrane is selectively permeable against those water soluble ions. So that means that they can't just travel through by themselves. So how we're gonna say that here is we're gonna say the membrane protein is selective for that type of ion. Ions cannot pass through the membrane unless it's a small lipid soluble ion. That lipid soluble part is what allows it to move through even though it's an ion. Okay, part C. Part C says, describe the characteristics of the phospholipid bilayer that per permits small hydrophobic lipid molecules to pass directly across the membrane. So this is talking about the structure of uh, the phospholipid bilayer and why, um, like what are the properties that keep things in or out. So the interior of the phospholipid bilayer is hydrophobic. which allows small hydrophobic molecules to pass. So notice something here is that your responses do not have to be super long. They can be a, a pretty moderate length, right? All right, in part D, based on the model, explain whether the molecules shown crossing the membrane require energy to do so. So, the ones that are going uh, through the membrane, so these small lipid soluble uh, molecules, if you notice here, the picture shows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up here, and only four down here, which means it's moving based on the picture from high to low. So that is with the concentration gradient. If it's with the concentration gradient, it does not need energy. So for part D, Right here, we'll say energy is not required because the molecules are moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. Okay, and that is FRQ 1 and 2 from the progress checks from Unit 2, so please make sure that you turn that in.